Hey guys, I'm so excited to be with you today. Um, my name is Carolina. I'm with Ritual. Um, I'm actually the product lead at Ritual and our team is responsible for working with designers and engineers to bring the digital experiences to life that you see on our website. When I have a six month old. I gave birth at the start of the pandemic to a little guy named Arlo, who I love so much. Um, he was born six and a half weeks early, so I can talk a lot about preemie babies if any of you guys have that experience. Um, but it's been such a crazy time to be a new mom for so many reasons. Um, and I'm personally really excited to be chatting with you guys today about community because I've, I've felt like it's been really hard for me in this new world that we're living in to figure out what community looks like for a new mom. Um, so looking forward to hearing um, you guys speak to your own experiences. Um, but before we jump in, I'd love for each of you to just round robin, um, sort of introduce who you are, what you do for a living, and who your kids are. Age and name would be great. I'm Lizzie Mathis. I'm the founder of thecoolmom.co. I am um, a model turned actress turned entrepreneur. Um, actually, motherhood was the kickoff for me to even become an entrepreneur and really share my voice and my stories and um, create this journey in this community of motherhood. Um, so I'm really excited to always talk about motherhood. Uh, speaking of motherhood, I have three. I have uh, Nima, who's my oldest, she's eight. Nyla, who's my middle, she is five. And Kalik, who's my youngest, who will almost be three. He's two and a half. Um, and yeah, so that's me. My name's Natalie. I'm the founder and CEO of Fashion Mamas. I launched it when my son, who's now six, was three months old, um, which blows my mind every time. Uh, I also have a daughter named Rio Rose, and she's two years old. And that's it. That's my story. <laughs> Love it. So we're Pam and Dolly. We are um, wives and the mother the mothers of little Eloise over here. She just turned four months old. Um, for a living, I am an audience development manager and Dali is a- I'm a designer. visual designer, yeah. And we, we have an account that started off as a shop um, called softfem.shop. Um, you can find, them, find us on Instagram. It, we closed down the shop, but now we're just like, kind of use it as a lifestyle account where we just share um, our journey as mothers, same-sex couples, and as fem, fem, fems. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, thank you guys for introducing yourselves and for joining us today. I'm uh, really excited to work with each of you. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, Pam and Dolly, I'd love to uh, just chat more about your experiences. We've been so inspired at Ritual um, by your journey to motherhood together. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your experience, what you've learned along the way, um, that both balancing your relationships, your roles at work and supporting each other individually? I gave birth in May, so it's like in the height of the pandemic. Um, luckily, we are able to work from home, but juggling that with taking care of a four-month baby is not easy at all. But we make a good team. I think it, one of the great things, there's like this hashtag on Instagram, like two moms are better than one. And I, we can attest to that because like, we really do compliment each other as mothers. Like uh, there are things that I like trust Dolly to take care of and there's things that she trusts me to take care of so like our journey into motherhood was like very aside from the fact that you know it's a new baby during a pandemic in New York City um it was it's been pretty smooth um she's also a very easy baby um we're also actually in the process of um, me trying the idea was for us to both get pregnant at the same like not at the same time but like um once I hit the third trimester she was gonna start trying but yeah. then corona yeah, happened. like literally we, we were scheduled to start in March and that's like right around the time that like the shutdown uh, started. So I'm actually now in the process of trying. Um, so hopefully soon we'll have two under two. <laughs> um, Natalie or Lizzie, I'm curious to know, you know, based on your experiences um, with your partners um, and, you know, what you went through in your pregnancy journey, given that, um, you know, the stresses for you um, as a pregnant woman um, are sort of different than 
um, the stresses that your partners were each taking on throughout your journey and, in, and throughout your journey postpartum. And I'm wondering if you can speak to um, sort of what success looked like for you guys in finding a new normal, both from a communication, relationship management, or general support standpoint. I mean, I laugh because I feel like Natalie and I have talked about this many at times, even during both of our pregnancies. Um, but I just want to say that I am so jealous of the two moms because I <laughs> wish there was another mom uh, in the house while I, you know, was pregnant or giving birth or postpartum. I mean, there's something that moms give that you know, dads, I think that with all best intentions, they try, but they just, it's just not the same. And so to have two moms, I'm super jealous. But um, <laughs> to answer your question, I think that, you know, it's an adjustment for everybody, right? I mean, it was adjustment for me because it's this whole new way of my body shifting, changing, um, me taking care of a new human outside of myself and me caring so much about something that wasn't me, you know what I mean? Or wasn't my husband, it was like this new life. And so there's so many shifts and changes that, that I felt like I was going through. And for him, you know, I, I almost feel, I almost feel a little bit of sympathy sometimes for my partner, my husband, because I just felt like he never knew, like he, he just, he didn't know what was the right thing to do, when was the right thing to do it. He didn't know what my body was feeling like, what it was going through. And for me to verbalize it was kind of difficult. And I had to really figure out what words were the right words and just kind of, you know, sometimes it just was something I couldn't explain. Um, but first baby was a huge transition for us. I mean, we had to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, my husband's name is Issa, Issa and I. And we had to be just really brutally honest. Sometimes it was, I didn't feel like being touched. Sometimes I needed you to take the baby. Sometimes I just wanted to take the baby and I wanted you to take care of me. Um, and so I think that we, were, we tried really hard to be as open and honest with, you, with each other throughout the process. Because when we, when we weren't, that's when we hit roadblocks. Um, and you know, new life is a very special thing, but it's also very difficult uh, for a lot of moms. And so, for me, it was finding the balance, and this is how the Cool Mom Co. even got started And uh, for, for me, was just, it was finding the balance ultimately between being the woman who I was, right? This woman who loved um, putting herself together and getting, you know, pretty and like blah, 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 with this new life um, that all I really wanted to do was like just I didn't care about anything else. Like all I cared about was her. So I didn't care if I didn't shave my underarms. I didn't care if my hair was wild and crazy. I didn't care what I looked like. And so it was this balance that I was constantly trying to find between these two women that I now was, right? Um, and that's where, that's where the Cool Mom Co. began because for me, it was just, I knew that I could be a really good mom and a cool mom and this awesome mom, but I knew I could also still be this woman who I was where I enjoyed, um, being me. Absolutely. That's my friend, guys. <laughs> I love, uh, everything I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to add, so I, I was living the antithesis of momhood before all of this. I was a fashion editor traveling the world. Paris party? Let's go. Let's jump on the plane. Me and my husband were living our best life. We met at a party and we, you know, we partied all for 10 years before it all went down. And the thing is, I have to be honest, when I found out I was pregnant, I cried and I cried because I was excited, but I also cried because I was worried that it was the end of like this incredible freedom that me and him created and nurtured so long. And he was my king and he was every, he was my baby and my king and all the things at the same time. And he took care of me. And it's like, I remember vividly us on the couch together and we cried and we cried and we just said like, look, it's beautiful that this is happening, but let's not get it twisted. This is like the closing of this chapter where we can just like on a whim do anything. And we just like cried for that part of our identity together. He's gonna hate that I shared that part, but it was just like, I'm just being real. And yeah, definitely. What happened with Fashion Mama is similar to uh, Lizzie is I wanted to try to share with others and hopefully inspire, which in turn inspires me watching everyone else. 
do both as best as you can. I definitely wanted to maintain my rowdy self and just be who I am wholeheartedly. And I have a baby on my hip and I'll fall apart. I'll make mistakes. I'll unravel. I'll cry all the things, but I still am being true to myself. So both of those things were so important to me. I'm oversharing all the time. And I wanted other women who felt that they wanted to do both and not lose their identity and kind of enhance their identity that to come on board with us. Um, and in turn, I, what I hope is that it's helped a lot of people because I know it's helped me. Um, you know, it's definitely been a self-fulfilling project that um, has turned into what it has. And, you know, I always promised to my husband that, look, the babies will get to an age where we're going to be doing it all again. And, you know, I have to say, just like Lizzie said, after second baby, two years old for her is just like, it's a game changer. My son is six. My, you know, my, old, my youngest is two. And I feel like we're kind of there again. And we're finding ourselves again and you know we've been patient and all at once time has flown it's been exhausting and long but all at once it's like my i look at their baby and i'm just like oh i miss that <laughs> yeah but yes two moms i think i would do that in my next life <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and totally. And they're in this process together. So as one is going through pregnancy, the other is there supporting her. And, um, you know, you're doing it all within, you know, a short amount of time, which will only mean for a stronger relationship. I feel like my husband now knows how to support me in my day to day because I had to be just like so vulnerable and transparent with how I was feeling physically, what I was going through emotionally in order for him to even relate. So the fact that you guys can share that experience together is really special. And I really appreciate you guys just being totally honest and um, putting your hearts on your sleeve because I think that's how we can really dig into some meaty conversation, and hopefully help women that are going through um, a, a fairly tumultuous, a tumultuous postpartum experience themselves. Did you guys feel like at the end of the day, in order to, to be really strong with your partners post baby, that it came down to transparency and open dialogue? Yeah, and, and in our case, I think that's one of the reasons why our relationship like strengthened once we had the baby, because we were just kind of going through the emotions, you know, of life, you know, and then once the baby came and everything changed, and there was like, and Dolly went through this roller coaster of emotions, it, it, it really took it was challenging for for us and so like we had to sit down and talk all the time and i had to like check in with her yeah i feel like especially now um with the pandemic and with people really focusing inward and spending more time at home our relationship with our partners are so, sort of core to establishing community after baby and maybe a way that we wouldn't have expected um like personally my circle of friends is so important to me and, um, you know, the fact that I couldn't rely on them in the way that I normally would have, um, I think was a really difficult transition and something that, you know, I'm still figuring out. So I'd love to shift from sort of the partner to the friend um, side of the community building um, discussion and get a sense from you guys on what it has been like for you and your friend groups to transition from being sort of that single individual contributor to I'm now a mom and my priorities have shifted and the things that I care about um, are, are fundamentally different. So like, how did you bridge making um, that transition with your friends? Um, and how, did you see any relationships change? <laughs> well, <laughs> so I just want to jump in that literally and my friends will, my friends will test, like they will agree with this. Like maybe like months prior, they were like, imagine Natalie pregnant, ha ha ha. Like it was just like a joke. Like just because it was just like, like I said, we were just like full speed ahead. And the one thing that I, I was the first of my friends to definitely the first of my friends to have little ones. Like my idol of like a mom doing it all was Nicole Richie. And I didn't know her, but she was just like, or like Rachel Zoe on TV. I was like, who else is like in the fashion industry and also a mom? Like, I just don't. And then you start opening your circle more when you're just searching, researching for those people in your life. But um, yeah, my friends were definitely um, 
it was shocking for all. <laughs> and I was just like, I am the same person here. And I'm just like wearing my diaper with my baby. I'm like, come over, like I'm the same girl. And, she says, and it was just like, I was really adamant on, look at mom multitasking over here. I was really adamant on um, being who I am. But with all that said, I didn't give myself some grace for a minute. And I was like, I gotta be me. I gotta be original Natalie before baby, da da da. Instead of just like slow down, it's hard, it's okay. And I definitely crashed and burned in front of my partner a few times because I was just like, I have to be everything to my friends and everything to my social media following and like everything to all of you here. And um, it was a lot of communication that needed to be had. So even my friends were like, girl, we get it. It's like, you wanna, you want to uh, be there for everyone. I'm definitely that type, Lizzie knows I'm that type of person. I wanna be there for everyone. And uh, self care took me a minute. I was a total, I, I'm not the opposite, but for me, um, no, friends sucked. Friends sucked mm -hmm. during this process. And I will say it again, they sucked. And any of my friends know that it was a, it was a rough time because I was also like Natalie, the first of my friends to have kids. So no, no one before me had walked through this process. So for them, it was all like, oh, okay, this will be all, this is what you're doing. Okay, cool. And they tried to be supportive in like their own way, but it just wasn't, it wasn't enough. And the reason why is because I think they expected me. See, I didn't expect this. And maybe this is where Natalie and I differ. Like she was like excited to try and still be that same person. I wasn't, I knew I was different. Like I knew I was going to be like, oh, this is, ah, uh, this is a new me. So you either accept the new me or, you know, we can't really have the same relationship. And so my friendships totally went through these transformations and I felt like they expected me to still be on the phone three times a day or four times a day, like having conversations about, you know, whatever it was they wanted to talk about their single life or whatever it was. And I was like, yo, uh, I'm kind of feeding life over here. Like I'm trying to take care of a human. I don't really have time to talk about the menial stuff. And it wasn't menial in their lives. It was very important, but that's kind of how I thought at the time. So it took a lot of shifting for me also to say, okay, just because my life has changed, doesn't necessarily mean that same shift has happened in their life. And we have to come to some sort of like, um, just middle ground, right? On how our new relationship is. Our relationship won't be the same because my life isn't the same. And so because of that, we both had to like, you know, on um, my friends, I, we just both had to like give and, and get a little bit less and a little bit more here and there and figure it out. But friendships were very difficult. I felt like um, a lot of friends shifted during that time and I felt very alone. And it wasn't until my daughter probably my oldest daughter probably got to age maybe like two and she was starting to be able to like go into programs and like schools and all that sort of thing till I really started to then find as Natalie knows because she became one of them but a mom base and a mom community and mom friends and that's what really saved me here in LA because all of my friends were out of town none of my friends lived here so not only were they out of town but we were also going through this weird shift in our relationship uh, my husband was basically my only friend, which you all know how that must be. And then, you know, not having another outlet, like no sister or anything like that, no wife, <laughs> you know, and just being over here. It was like, it was dire for me to find mom friends. And I remember the first time I met Natalie and like, I walked up to her and I was like, um, hi, I'm a mom. Uh, and it's awkward, but those relationships now have carried me through and I have so many mom friends now, but those first couple of years were, it was brutal. It was brutal. For us, it's been a little bit different only because the birth of our daughter coincided with like the whole shutdown of the, of the country. So like we, we had to, you know, we were, we were going to end up being indoors anyway and hibernating because we had a baby, you know, like in, in the Latino culture, they say like, Oh, you go into quarantine when you have a baby technically, because you like, in some cultures, they expect people, to, uh, moms to be taken care of for 40 days, not leave the house and all this other stuff. Um, so, but the, the pandemic was happening right at around the same time. So we had to be alone and, and alone with a baby. Um, so, and we're still adjusting to that. We still are not very social people. We, we are also very introverted and our best friends as well. So we do have each other. Um, but I do 
appreciate my, my the French friends that I do have. Um, none of them are most of them, at least the ones in New York, because most of my like my best friends live back in the Dominican Republic, which is where I'm from. So like, and their moms, and I, I'll tap into them here and there, but you know they're not the ones that I hang out with and go out with or whatever on a, on a regular basis. So what I um, I remember one time in therapy, I was talking to my therapist about oh how my friendship's going to change and all that. And she and she has two kids, and she's like you know, you're going to end up doing exactly what Liz and Natalie were discussing. Like, you're going to find a new group of friends. You're, 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 you're going to find mom friends, and that's going to be it. Your best friends right now, they're going to take another, like, place in your in your life. And so I kind of went in knowing that, and now what I do is I appreciate being able to go back and just talk random things and just, like, be – not a mom for like an hour or two when I when I hang out with them. One thing I wanted to add was that there was a mom guilt and it wasn't a mom guilt of like, I'm not there enough for my baby. It was a, maybe let me put, rephrase, it was a friend guilt. I was worried because I had my baby at 30 years old. And there's, you know, the world is different now. There is no benchmark for success. Like life is changing, life is evolving. But you know, there's like a, an age, right? So I just felt that I didn't want to show off that I was a mom. So I really felt empathy for my friends, even if they didn't want kids. I just was like, I don't want it to act like I have this new thing that you don't have. And I just, there was something in me. I don't know if anyone who ends up watching this can relate, but I, I just felt that way. So I just, I really felt like I wanted to be like, no, tell me about your like, your boy problems. Like you got to leave him. Da, da, da. And they're just like, your baby's like, few days old and I was just like I was just trying to be there but so it was very hard so being a mother has definitely shifted I just started protecting my energy in the last few years like Lizzie the way you talk it sounds like you've been protecting your energy and that's beautiful totally I, I relate to each of your experiences and in fact um, with my friend group at least I think I benefited from being the second or third person that had a baby because from seeing my friends go through it um, I was able to sort of go in with the foresight that I kind of needed to still be an individual contributor in the sense that I knew that I needed to check in with my friends, keep a pulse on what's going on in their lives, stay connected to that, and then figure out how to insert my new like momhood identity, um, which is something that I'm still sorting out. I'm only six months in and I totally relate to Dolly and Pam's experience. It's really hard being in a pandemic and remote and um, figuring out how to create genuine community um, online and and like organically through your friend groups, especially when we're trying to be so careful um, with the health of our kids. So that may be a good segue into the next topic, which is how do we use these incredible digital resources that are available to find community and to find more like-minded individuals that um, you know we can seek out learnings. Um, from? Are there good resources that you guys have each found to help us connect with new moms that may support our journey in these next years ahead? Facebook has been a saving grace, to be honest. I've found so many mom groups in there. For There's a mom group for every single issue you may have. Just to be able to, to see I'm not alone, that there's other women that, that are going through the same thing as I am. That has helped me tremendously. Also, um, I've gotten like, mess, um, like virtual friendships through the Peanut app. We haven't met in person, of course, of, because of the pandemic. But it's it has been nice to talk with other moms um, and see like how they're struggling and just support each other virtually, at least. I yeah. think community is so incredibly key. <laughs> And it's inspiring too, because when you're watching other people and their energy and what they're sharing, it kind of either gives you a spark to continue building. Let's, you know, like my community is career driven, you know, it sparks to keep going or it, it encourages you to start sharing and start making a friend and, you know, being like Lizzie was like she was born to be a fashion mama, like at Soho House, she, she came up to me and we, were, we had a panel that day there. And she just came and it was just kind of like, you know your girl when you see her. So it was just like open arms right away. And it's so comforting. So I can definitely understand how hard it is in a digital world to be able to make those connections. Uh, luckily, you know, there's a lot of great mom 
communities, it feels, you know, I'm biased and it feels like I'm cheating being able to share mine here, but um, there really are so many. And I mean, if it was up to me, I say the more the merrier. There's so many mothers, new mothers are born every day. Um, my community is really specific to fashion and creative industry women. Um, we have 600 members across the world and it's membership based. So that's something that has been working for us for six years. And I still to this day um, recommend and turn women to other places. I think that women can't have enough ways to connect, have, can't have enough resources. And listen to everything that you guys said, I totally agree. Community is everything, especially as a new mother more than anything. I cannot, I, I honestly cannot imagine what it must be like um, in this COVID world of um, being a new mom and really trying to find that community. Like I think Facebook obviously would be a really great resource that I would have used. Um, peanut app is good. I've heard of peanut app before. Uh, when, I was, when I was pregnant having my last date or my third, I don't know if it's my last, but my third. Um, so I think peanut app actually is a really good app and I'm sure there's so many other resources for moms to like meet and talk and get to know each other online, but it is a difficult process. I feel like, I mean, one of the best parts of, or not the best parts, but one of the parts of new motherhood was like you said, these groups where you could go and interact and babies could talk and see each other and, and that kind of thing. So I just hope that, you know, it moves on to another phase. But there are blogs, there are still sites and things like that that people can, you know, reach out to and obviously find this, like, motherhood um, connection with, right? Or even just similar things to look up or people are going through or whatever. I mean, the Cool Mom Co., we try to also, like, give as much information as possible just on just kind of bridging the gap between being a mom, being like a, a fashionable, stylish, lifestyle still elements of motherhood that you still want to employ in your normal life and, and also just motherhood. And yeah. I love what you said about um, what the two moms said about, I'm so distracted by this adorable baby. Ah! What you said about like finding specific like targeted interests yeah. that's where the sparks fly and the ice breaks. So, I mean, I'll always say this, but if you notice that there's a void of a specific targeted group, maybe that's the universe telling you that there's something there for you to create, um, you know? And so I think that, and it gives you a distraction and a project to work on amidst all of this overwhelming time. But um, yeah, I definitely believe in if you don't see it, like it's, you know, create it. That's what I'm doing. I mean, for me, it was hard because I didn't see um, a lot of women of color and especially like black women who um, were mothers and who were happy and who were either married or in relationships or whatever it was. I never saw that. And so for me, you know, that's what it was a big part for me starting, you know, my site or whatever. It was about showing the fact that we existed and there was a space. So Natalie's right. I feel like whenever you see a void, if you feel like there's one, that means there is. I love that. I have found that to be true, like offline, you know, it's given that my baby was born six and a half weeks earlier, but in talking about this experience with even my friends, they were like, let me connect you to this person whose baby came early and this person. And the more you open up about your own personal experience, I think the more people are, are willing to do the same and loop you into people that, you know, may be able to share in that, um, in that journey with you. And, and I found that to be invaluable. Wanted to chat a little bit too about um, maternity leave and, um, you know, if you guys had any specific, I know you, you each sort of run your own businesses or it sounds like work for yourselves. So curious about your times creating protected maternity leaves based on your work and kind of what it was, what it looked like for you to transition um, into your work community um, from being, you know, that, that nesting at home, I'm just focused on my baby 24 seven. For me, I don't know if it ever stopped. That's the thing. Like, I don't know if there was ever really, because I've worked for myself for so long um, and even modeling and acting, like it, 
it was still modeling and acting obviously took a back seat once I became a mother just because I didn't want to travel as much and I was traveling like three times a week and um, before having my first and it was just exhausting and I just knew it's something that I didn't want to uh, keep up that pace and that lifestyle as a as a new mom I just knew it so I knew there was going to be a shift and a transition um, but in working for yourself I feel like it just I didn't I didn't get that proper maternity leave where I just was able to like shut off completely and go into full on mama mode. I feel like I just kind of continued on for two years basically until my daughter was able to kind of go into a program or a Montessori program is what we put her into at the time. Um, so I feel like I was just juggling the whole time from baby infant to her turning two to that's when I finally got uh, a solid six hours of alone time to kind of work or whatever. And then I got pregnant again, but um, <laughs> that's were you just thing. transparent with, with people that you were working with day to day, like, Hey, I need this, or I need some dedicated space to pump or breastfeed or whatever. How did you sort of communicate your journey in real time? You know, I think unfortunately I wasn't. And maybe that was something that was maybe that's me being in full honesty. I don't think I really was. I mean, my husband knew and my husband's very hands on. And so he was kind of like, you know, right there helping me through the, the baby and mental process of it. But anyone who I was working with, um, no, I think that I just kind of moseyed along as if I was still in work mode, which is probably very unhealthy. Um, you know, now that I have three kids, it's probably not the best way to go about it. I think that, you know, people who take, like you even said, the 40 days, we, we, we spent the 40 days or the month inside the house. We did not leave. And we did that with every baby. I was really um, intentional about that just because I really believe there's something really special about that bonding period. But even still, I was still on the computer. I was still on my phone. I was still doing things. Um, but it was just because I knew that if I stopped, the whole train would stop. And so there was no other choice really, but people who are in the position who can take that time and just like shift that focus from um, work to just baby for even two weeks. I mean, even three weeks, whatever it is that you have, I think it's so worth it because it's just, it's a mental shift. And I think you need it. You just don't even realize you need it. I didn't realize I need it till three kids later. And just now, that's when I realized that I needed it. <laughs> and it's so much pressure to put on you to have to deal with the new baby, the changing relationship, managing work all in real time. So it sounds like you did it beautifully, but you must have had to rely on your partner and on your community of friends to get through it. Yeah, beautifully is a, is a very big statement, but thank you. And, um, yes, you know, but you know, it's one of those things that you never realize what you're doing or how you can do it until you're in the moment and you're just doing it. Like people are always like, how do you do three kids or how do you blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're just in it. You're on, you're on auto drive. You just don't even realize the strength you have. I believe this from the bottom of my heart. I believe that no woman ever understands the strength that she truly possesses until motherhood. Like I think motherhood challenged you. And that's if you're, for, that's if uh, there's so many women who, who are able to become mothers and, you know, um, who have struggles and, and that sort of thing. But if you are able to become a mom and if you do become a mom and if that's the journey you choose to take, motherhood is one of those journeys that literally tests you in every way as a woman. And it really shows you how strong you really are. It really does. I never, I never knew how strong I was until, until I was a mother. I feel like women are inherent survivors. Like we survive, we have that mentality that we're just like no f this we're gonna do it and it's just that's our energy and it's okay to also be like I can't do this I I'm throwing in the towel and you'll have hopefully those hype people around you just kind of like I got you just tell me what I can do to help you get to that finish line but um yeah I definitely believe that at first I was gonna be like it's the Latina culture we're survivors we do this and then every mother I talk to is just like it's effing hard and it's like we are all just like by the, like a hair we're getting by. <laughs>
But even just like multitasking, I mean, even the simplest task of multitasking, before motherhood, I could not multitask to save my life. I mean, I was like, no, I am focused in on this right here. What do you need from me? I me swear, too. if three kids walk in right now, just like Natalie just did, pour the milk, did this, blah, 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 talk to Diego. That, I mean, you don't even understand. And she held a conversation the entire time. She was talking the entire time. That's what, I mean, that's what motherhood, you don't even realize you're doing it and you're doing it. I multitask now better than I ever knew I had the capability of doing. Totally relate to all of your experiences. And I, I found actually the most Im amazing thing is um, before motherhood, I had a hard time like really focusing in on like what really mattered to me only because I likened myself to somebody that just had a lot of interests, right? So I was like, always just open to sort of exploring who I was and maybe where my interests would take me on a day-to-day -day basis. After motherhood, I'm like, all right, I got eight hours in a day to do work. I have one hour to myself. In my one hour, this is what I like and this is what I'm going to do. And it makes you refocus on how you spend your time that's um, meaningful, I think, in a whole new way. And I found that to be actually really inspiring and um, eye-opening. I don't know if you guys have had similar experiences in that way. Nap time is when we come alive. I always feel like a woman can live her whole life during that nap time. Like, I'm just like, you don't even know everything I got done. <laughs> Bang out all those emails back at email inbox zero. I mean, if you can make it there and you're just like, I'm done. I did it today. <laughs> and then some days you're just like, I'm just going to sit on this couch right here and Instagram and nurse. And that is my day. But I fed a life. <laughs> Love that. I agree with that. I mean, honestly, I think that finding finding your moments right throughout the day is extremely important. Um, nap times are gold. I every every child when they stop taking naps, I shed a tear. At the stage that they stop taking the nap, I was like, okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> uh, but for me, we instantly, and this is obviously when you get a little bit like the kids get a little bit older though, but we're really on the whole um, bedtime at a certain time during the week. Like we don't play on weekends. We're a little bit more lenient. Everyone can hang out, whatever. But during the week we are like, because at the end of the day, that's like, like Natalie said, I come alive at seven o'clock. At seven o'clock, it's like my time. It's like, oh, I hear bells ringing. It's the <laughs> most beautiful time of the day. Great. Yeah. That's why I loved when you said like, oh, I just nursed my baby and that's, that's what I did today and I felt like that's that's true like we need to also learn how to slow down like um I feel like we're just like expected as women to do so much and to be on the go 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 and it, it wears you down when you start thinking about like all that you haven't done and I try not to worry about it like I I, I want to make sure that every that my baby is taken care of and that my house is is up to par for her, for the, the kind of household that I want her to grow up in. And then the rest is like, okay, like I'll do as much as I can, but I also have to take care of my mental health because I need to be happy so that we, we can make her happy, so that I can make her happy. So like, it's, it's definitely a balance too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You gotta give yourself grace. That's what I always kept reminding myself. Give myself grace. Just give myself grace. Like grace is such an important word because you know, it really does like, remind you that it's okay we're not curing cancer you know what I mean and if you are curing cancer then you probably shouldn't sleep you should probably keep working super hard around the clock and that should be your life because that's important one of the most important things in new motherhood is to bond with that baby so you are creating a bond that is going to last a lifetime and the bond that you have with that child will vibrate into every relationship that that child has from now on into the world so that is the most important thing that needs to be done. So give yourself grace on everything else. If you can, great. If you have the mental capacity, fine. If blah, blah, blah wonderful. If not, cool. You're still doing everything that you need to be doing in this very moment in time. And that's all I could do, you know? I mean, great. That's very beautifully said. I couldn't agree more. Um, I've also heard that it's really important in the first six months or maybe in the first year to have babies get um, exposure to other babies. And given that the world that we're living in, you know, that just offers um, some challenges. So I'm curious to hear your guys' perspective on 
how important that is in the first year and maybe some tips on how moms that are experiencing, um, you know, this pandemic life might, might create space for that if it's important to them? Um, I think it's just like be their best friend that first year right now. Like they're good. You're going to be like their buddy. And I promise you that they're never going to be like, I didn't have a friend the first year of my life. Like they're not going to remember that, um, at all. Um, so it's just like, give yourself grace. Like Lizzie said, and it's just like all the books, all the toys, all of the things you have in your home, make the best of it and just have that time with Listen, it'd be awesome to have, you know, Mozart come back to life and play for my baby every afternoon at, you know, noon. Like, that would be so awesome. But that's not happening. Like, it's, it's, that's just not where we're at right now, right? So it's almost like if, if, if even if every study in the world says that's the most amazing thing and that's not what you can provide right now, that's okay. Like, that's okay too, because like Natalie said, there's no baby ever that's going to be like five or six or seven and come back and be like, you, I didn't have one friend at one. I just didn't, mom. They're just, no, just, it's not happening. So, you know what I mean? Like, I always tell like my friends in every phase too, I'm just like, it's a phase. Like, this is a phase. Corona is happening. So it's here and we're going to try and protect our families and our babies the best way we possibly can. If that means that we're not meeting up with other people right now, then that's what it means right now. But it won't be like this forever. Like, we, your babies will have a chance. Our kids will have a chance to play with other children and they will develop those social skills. Just take it day by day, day by day. It's, it's just keep it simple. There's so many other things that we worry about as mothers, as women. It's like, you know, uh, working in this world, whatever it is that we're doing in this world, there's so many other pressures. Don't let that one of them, let that be one of them. For us, we really haven't been too concerned about like making sure that she meets other babies. Like we're like, as you all, you're, you all mentioning, we're going through unprecedented, time, unprecedented times and our priority is maintaining her health and our health um but in the meantime we are trying to create like connections with like the babies of our neighborhood going back to facebook groups you know facebook should send me that check because i'm about to promote them again facebook groups um we found a group for babies in our area that were born in the summer so it's like the summer summer baby group so like there we we've been uh getting to know the other other parents and when it's safe we will eventually will meet. But in the meantime, we're, we're preparing for that for when it's time to do that. But at the, at, in, in the meantime, we're fine as it is, just the three of us. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Um, I've, I've mentally written all of these suggestions down over the course of this hour. So thank you guys so much for sharing your experiences, your ideas, um, and time with me today. Um, thank you so much for, for joining in this uh, postpartum um, journey with us all.